good everyone happy thursday hopefully y'all doing well and in good health right it's your homie sneaks once again bring you another video bring you another story hopefully you've been liking the content whether it be music whether it be this sort of stories or something else that i'm kind of trying to bring up on the on the channel you know what i mean uh any suggestions will be appreciated or whatever content you kind of like more let me know what's up right and i'll and i'll mess with it even more this story I wanted to talk to you about for quite a few years now. And I still get, I would say like messages or people who I come to know what tend to ask me these sort of questions. And I'm like, you know what, I think this is about this time. I just didn't know really how to like go about it in a way that I kind of like would like to show you as well. And I just be sitting here telling you, oh, well, I'm just sitting here telling you a story. But at the same time, give me a little visuals and some sort of um, proof about certain things. You know what I mean? It's just to keep it more interesting, in my opinion, you know? All right, so let's get to it. Those of you that know, I've been doing music for quite a few years. For those that don't know, just check out my content. Let me know if I'm good or not, all right? So around, uh, I already told a story where um, I started doing music on my own. From then on, uh, when I was young, I start, I met somebody by the name of Little Speedy, started doing music with him, but that was in cassettes, you know what I mean? I was in like, that was in many, many years ago. So we were doing tapes for quite a few years, passing them out. Uh, for a few years, uh, we, we kind of separated away as he got into some other stuff. I still kept wanting to do music, so I proceeded a little bit more. You know, I still had that passion, I still had that view that, that hey, it could, something could crack, you know what I mean? And something I was passionate about, so I'm moving forward with this. So I did that, met the homie Risky, uh, from then on I met his brother, which is Dinero, and uh, from then on we, uh, we got together and started doing music together like that, as a group, you know? And just to throw it out there, because I mentioned some names, I forgot to throw it out there, I will mention some names out there, <laughs> not to throw your name in a bad way, but just to tell this story, alright? So with all of our respect, hopefully you homies are doing well, and still grinding out there, you know what I mean? Because I know... Well, you guys been doing your thing, of course, I've been doing my thing, and life, of course, take its course, you know what I mean? But by all means, all means, much love on my side. So as we're doing music together, all right, as a group, the homie got his studio, so we're, I'm kicking at his spot uh, with the homie, uh, majority of times with the homie Risky doing music and stuff like that. Um, by this time, the homie Dinero, uh, already came across past was triple I, you know what I mean? He was like chilling, doing stuff with them, and me and the homie, uh, Risky knew about this, but of course, it's like, hey, we should be giving all the homies love and support, you know what I mean? Because that's what we're here to do, grow. You know, if one of us makes it, fuck yeah, homie, con todo respeto on that. And, um, what do you call it? So he was doing his thing, me and the homie were doing our thing in the studio. Uh, one day, uh, um, I, I think we knew he, he, they were recording, uh, doing an album called Los Mexicanos, all right? Los Mexicanos, which is this. This is like flyers we used to pass out, all right? Just to throw that out there, but just to give you an idea. I'll get back to that as well. Doing an album called Mexicanos, and if we wanted to go over there and um, do a song, because they wanted to feature me and Risky. Since we do music together, hey, there's... there's, there's well, we all did music together, but you know what I mean? The homie wanted to show us love and, and, um, creator at the time. Oh, let me pull up the picture. Let me see if you know about this. See right here. See, you know the people want to talk about? Homie Risky, Homie Dinero, Creator, Triple A, and, uh, me. Alright. So, as the homie's doing their album, the homie Dinero wanted to take us and, uh, be a part of the album, right? I'm pretty sure Triple A, too, being one song. And that, that song was called uh, Andamos Locos. I think it is from the Mexicano song. And um, so they were recording their studio. It was, it was at Long Beach at that time. We go into, uh, to Long Beach, uh, me and the homies do. We do the, the verse, you know what I mean? From what, from what I could recall, that's all we, like, we were there to do, like record and maybe chop it up with the homies, of course, and the producer that they had, which is creator. Uh, being at being in the studio, me and the homie we've already done record a song. Then I could recall creator along those lines, all like, "Hey, homie, will come over here," type of thing. Chopped it up for a bit. Next thing you know, he brings out some paperwork. Paperwork being a contract. 
Now I was surprised by this because I, I I don't I don't recall the homie like Dinero saying hey this is what's gonna happen you know it just came out about a surprise and stuff like that you know and I can't even speak if anybody else on that label I'm pretty sure some did like I'm pretty sure maybe even Triple R or Dinero did but I can't say that they did or not you know only they could say that but as far as for me and the homie Risky because we were all together on the studio uh, the producer gave us a, a contract. And in my head, I'm like, well, if there's a contract, already seen, knowing what these homies been doing, what they've been doing, the videos, uh, the way they record the beats, everything. To me, I was like, this is the, this is a, the next step, the next level step, for, at least for me as an artist. But it's dope that I was with the homies at the time and we were doing it all together. So I, I signed a contract, and what the contract was, five years of contract with ten percent of everything. That gets, I guess, sold in all those, the whole deal. I don't recall that by there for all the details when it comes to the contract. But one thing I can remember is that it was for five years and 10% of everything. So, I, like I said, I don't know if the homie got the same contract you know, or it could have been a little bit different. I don't know, but that was uh, the deal. And nothing was up front type of thing. Nor was I thinking like, hey, well, what's up with my money? Because I always hear about contracts and people getting this um, up front hand, all these uh, sort of money, right? It wasn't like that, at least for me. But either ways, I didn't, I didn't care about that. I mean, I did care about the money. But because the person who I knew I was fucking with and we were messing with, I mean, we've been doing, uh, we were working with the homies, all love. Everybody was doing this, we're grinding like, hell, like crazy right there. We're young. It's like, hell yeah, I see the possibilities, I saw the fucking, like, the possibilities, yeah, that we could make it, that we will, we will grow, if not one of us will, but you know what I mean, eventually we will all grow uh, certain ways or others, but we're doing it, we're making it happen. So we did that, and then afterwards, we just started working on songs, you know, My, uh, so some of the, majority of the songs were recorded in Long Beach, like I said, the studio was. But then afterwards, along the lines, they moved towards, uh, not for Long Beach, they moved towards over here in this area, like on the 66 area, I think it was, Ontario side, I think. I think that's where the last time, at least that I can recall, that we had the studio there uh, recording. So, but am I wrong? Like I'm saying, hey, by all means, anybody could correct me on this. All right, I'm just telling you the story. So that was the contract. So by then, we started recording, doing songs. At that time, I had a job. So I was working this job that the schedule was kind of crazy. Not only that, but it had overtime, me being young and everything. I, and I barely think I was barely going to be a father around that time. I did not have my daughter yet, but I was, um, I think um, sh the mother of my daughter was pregnant around that time. So I knew I had to work. You know, there was not if, uh, if or not I wanted to do and proceed just the music. And I think like I had to, I knew about what do. I was being responsible for that point in time, you know. And so I was doing that. If I wasn't doing that, I would have been a part of more projects. But I wasn't because of that crazy schedule. And I would be one of the drivers that would give all the homies rides to the studio from and back. Especially there was times it was not even me recording. Because I was in the studio sometimes where I wasn't even in the songs. Just being a part of what was being made with the beats, somebody else rapping. But I love that. I love the atmosphere of being in the studio. You know, it's dope. You know, it's beautiful creating something, hearing somebody create something, everything put in together. Like, it's just, just a dope feeling. Um, so, as that was going on, okay, now it's time to come around my project, right? Well, first of all, let me tell you something. Okay, I mentioned that the producer was named Creator. For those of you that don't know, and me, like I'm saying at the time, uh, didn't know who really uh, Creator was a lot, just about, based on the fact that I brought it up on a different, on a video before, that he was involved with um, some stuff with low profile, but I didn't know like low profile records, but I don't know like how much or, I mean, I still don't know saying, I know everything he's done, but I don't know like what type of work he's done or or what besides the song that I could recall him being on from what we talked about on that day when I met him. Um, so then after when I got the contract, everything, you know, I could imagine the feeling. I, I, from everything and all that I was like finally an answer prayer and finally I could do some things with this right as time goes on because I knew I had the passion for it and I knew I could like fucking bring it so so what do you call it so this is the moment right creator 
Oh, when I when I went back and started like really looking into into this guy, then it's just to bring you who he is and to show you what type of mindset I had and I'm like the type of crew that we had, you know, the type of group that we were at that time. Mr. Sancho, meant to be, right? I was hearing this some way before I even met this guy. Yeah. This song right here. So this song. But the, what I'm trying to say is like, yeah. right here, directed by Royalty and DEM, all right? DEM, Double Edge Music. Little Cuete, all right? For those of you, Little Cuete is dope too. Little Cuete, Take Me Away. Little Cuete, Norwalk Records, directed by DEM, Double Edge Music. This song. Bye, Daddy. What are you doing? But to tell you a little crazy story about this one, you know what I mean? And much love to the homie Little Cuete, uh, Mr. Sancho, everybody who I tend to mention, you know? Nothing but love. Especially because I know how it is hard work on this rap game, man. This video right here, Little Cuete, like I'm saying, it was shot by DEM, our, our producer at that time. Um, what do you call it? When we were at Long Beach Studio, uh, one day, I, I don't know if it was all of us. I know I was there, of course. I know Dinero, maybe Triple, I was there. I know, of course, Creator was there. That somebody was going to come over and so on. We didn't really know who it was or whatnot. But next thing you know, who comes in our studio was uh, the homie Little Cuete. He comes in, our producer, shows him, hey, check this out. He finally, was, he finally um, got done with the video, you know, of, that he was doing, for, that he, I guess he did for him or something. I can't recall if we knew about it or not, but either way, he was done with it. The homie came, he was going to view the video right there. So that video right there that you see, he saw it first, I think, in our studio in Long Beach, because that's when we met him. And we saw that video, and we saw it was dope, everything was dope about it. Of course, it's touching. I have a daughter myself, so I know exactly. Like I could feel this song on so many levels. So um, that's when I I met him, cool homie, chopped it up, and then um, with all of us, and that's when we saw him. When he, when he saw this video, and I'm guessing it was for the first time. But if you see this quote, then let me know if that's true or not. If that was your first time or not, but uh, if you could recall going to Long Beach uh, with the producer creator and seeing this. You know, with the other, with some other artists that were in that studio, I was one of them, homie. Much love, Pedro. All right. So then, so then, as like I'm saying, I already had the contract. We already been recording quite a few songs here and there. You know what I mean? We started working on some of my stuff. You know, from uh, my solo stuff. Because at first, um, oh, let me go back to this. Like I'm saying, because I showed this right, Mexicano. This is when we were promoting. Um, the CD for the homies right here because they were doing it together and that's when we got featured and when we got signed but as you can see right here Gmail, DEM, fan line, we had a fan line uh what? Mexicanos coming soon, Mr. Triple out, my way is coming soon, Dinero Money, Power and Honor coming soon Little Sneaks and Risk, The Suspects coming soon so me and the homie we were gonna do an album together. We would, we, uh, we started off as a group, or the song as a group, because we were always like recording shit together, right? But I guess uh, somewhere along the lines, uh, the producer uh, felt like, nah, you know what? Sneaks will be solo. Later on, Risky became a group with the Home Troubles, who came along afterwards. So then I was doing my solo stuff, because that's the way um, he uh, it was just going from then on. So as we're doing my solo stuff. We did my uh, my video, which is this one, taken from a G, and as you can see, directed by D E M, right? Double Edge Music Entertainment. So, so we're recording that. As I'm in the studio, <clears throat> as I'm in the studio, and he's doing, he's showing me my music video that I already got done. You know, we already shot it. I can remember a lot of talks. I won't say like all oh, course, like depth about it and stuff like that but I can remember some sort of talks not just there but like in the studio in general but when, when we were watching my video I recall we were talking about my album how it's gonna be how the view was how we were gonna take it and so on right um he told me he was wanting to try something with me on my album 
And what that was was that um, previous every previous recording before that time before he mentioned this, I was like doing like Spanglish type of rapping, right? I'll throw Spanish words up in there, of course, because that's our lingo, right? That's that's our estilo, you know. That's our that's our style. So I'll do that, you know, or some song that's just Spanish. But he told me like this is something I want to try with you when we do your album and when we do it, but it's just gonna be all English. Let's just try to leave Spanish out of this, you know, for this. Because he felt that I could tap in, I could make him, I could make a, probably be heard a little bit more in a sense. I just get a wider audience, a wider view, a wider ears, um, just be uh, globally heard in a way, you know. Like the way he told me about it and everything, I was like, okay, I never thought about it that way, you know. So sure enough, um, I said, oh, you know what? Let's do this, you know. I'm just want I want to work on my album. We talk about how it's gonna be, but at the same time, that that it would just be just English, and we're gonna see how that's gonna play out. So um, around this sort of time, I can't recall how long after, but okay, let me let me tell you this. So there were us, right? There was a few rappers in this label called Double Edge Music. We had another artist by the name of Swerve. He was a reggaeton artist. We had another female R&B artist, which was um, Diamond, I think it was. Never met Diamond. I have met Swerve. Swerve is a cool dude. Uh, freaking, um, I know he's a lot with the with the producer, but much love for him as well, you know, because I know he's been doing his grind. So much love and respect to you, dude, and hopefully you're doing well, homie. So, um, so there was those other artists, you know what I mean? But they'll be working on their sort of projects on their time with that producer. But um, the reason why I brought that up is because, um, uh, what, what do you call it? I kind of lost place right there. But, uh, oh yeah, as, we're, as we talked about my album, everything like that, right? Now, the homie uh, creator came from the East Coast. He came from the West Coast, you know, that's when, you know, he found Trip a lot. He started doing things with Mr. Trip a lot. Then from then it was Dinero, and then from them it was us, just to give you that. He worked along with some other artists, like I'm saying, Little Cuete. Uh, low profile records, but I can't speak on that. I'm only talking about my experience and from what I know of my circle. So that, and um, so he's been on the West Coast for a while. He's been doing music with us and so on, right? So he's he mentions that he kind of got uh, what do you call it? He kind of got homesick. He wants to go to the back to the East Coast to New York. But it doesn't mean that we're gonna stop doing the business. It doesn't mean we're gonna stop doing music. Since the homies have the studio here, I'm trying to make I'm trying to make my studio happen too now around this sort of time. Um, that we could record, we could send it to him, he could work on them, and so on and so on. And that he would he was even gonna fly us out from California over there, do videos over there, make music over there, so on and so on. So we're like, all right, cool, you know. It's like do your thing over there. And he was gonna take the homie Swerve over there and do some reggaeton videos over there and stuff like that. Um, for his projects so by all means I mean do your things so as time went on that's when I never really was hearing anything from him or about him or anything like that you know I'll ask the homie about it like the homies um, Dinero and stuff like that about him but the same thing I'll, I'll hear back like they haven't heard from him they don't know what's up I remember having his contacts his phone his email I'll email him I'll send him messages not all crazy but I will send them because I'm curious, I'm trying to find out what's going on. My pro we talked about our projects, my project as well, and I'm trying to get it get it going. And it's, it, I feel like everything comes to a stop and the homie is like forgetting about us or something. Or not even saying what's up, you know? Because sure it's business, but at the same time I thought we were homies, like friends around this sort of time because everything, we're, what we've been doing, how we've been grinding and other stuff too as well, you know? Um, so, um, so I never hear nothing back. Next thing you know, one day I go to the, uh, I go to the, to to, to the studio spot, and then uh, when uh, I'm not gonna like say your name, you know what I mean? But like freaking um, the homie, one of the uh, rapping homies tells me like, hey, you wanna you wanna see something that I saw or something that I found out? And I'm like, yeah, sure. So he takes me to the computer. He pulls up um, the website, or this sort of website. I looked it up, I was reading it, and like I'm saying, remember, our label was called Double Edge Music. Next thing you know, I'm seeing Double Edge Ministries. And I'm like, Double Edge Ministries? Now I see the producer, creator right there, boom, and other 
other um, artists, pictures of artists. And I'm like, well, what's all this? And as I'm reading, I guess, the bio, the, you know, what people put on the website sometimes, right? I can't recall de all details, but one thing that stood out to me is that he left his other label, his, well, he called us, he left his other secular label to continue something, a religious label of, of that need of that, of that nature. Something that he he left us something bad behind to pursue something good. That's the way I took it. That's the way it, it said, especially secular. Because uh, I was like, what the hell does that word even mean? You know, looked it up and all this sort of things. And it kind of tripped me out, man. Because it, it, I'm like, what the hell? How did this switch come about? And not even say anything about it. Or anybody. Because to, to my knowledge, nothing was said towards nobody. Not even to me. So I got shot by that, of course. Next thing you know, um, I can't remember if we had to talk about that with all the homies or not, but I'm pretty sure we did. And um, so I'm I'm looking at this like this will just drop us, you know, drop me and dropped everybody, and pursued something different. And um, and would it wouldn't been bad either, but it would have been open and honest and stuff like that. And especially trying to do like religious stuff, hey, like I'm saying, people was perceiving something good, especially. If, you know, towards a higher power by all means, you know, if that's what you're really trying to switch up your life for. So that happened. Time was going on once again, and I'm like, well, we have contracts with this dude, right? And around that time, and this is one thing when it comes to contracts, right? That I saw a certain video do, like, what do you do in a sense when you have a contract? Like this, like this, for instance. So you sign a contract, but you still have a certain amount of time. You know, you have uh, all this sort of work to back it up and talks and all this sort of thing. I'm not sure, well, that could be <laughs> viewed as as record in court, but at least, hey, it's like we did have this talk. Um, we just let it be, or we try to court, go to court and do some legal action, you know? Because I've, like, everything, if, right there, dude, like, it felt like freaking, once again, like, going back, right, towards where I once was. Like, that dream just crushed out of nowhere, and it wasn't... Uh, me laugh, fucked it up, or try to do something in a sense to fuck it up, you know. I was just doing what I was doing and grinding and showing the homies love. So um, nothing happened. So it's like that. So the <laughs> the one who I was with at the time was kind of like telling me, "Hey, you should take this guy to court, this and that, so on and so on." But I never did. Why? Because I never found a freaking contract after all those years. But I remember having it. You know, I remember signing it. And the homies were there, so like I'm saying, they could say it or not, or they could say it. There's sort of stories behind what they went through. I'm just telling my stories because no one else is going to tell them. I'm saying my stories so people could learn, live and learn about certain things. Maybe to not take taking advantage of. Not the same that I was, but at the end I kind of felt I did. You know? In some sort of ways. Not not just me, but all of us. Because we all work, we all hustle, we were in the grind promoting. We were on the streets promoting. You know? So that happened and no, n nothing, right? So as time went on, I go back to the studio. Like I was saying, like I always go to the to their spot and we'll be recording. Then uh, the homie, uh, I think Risky tells me, hey, my brother Dinero wants to tell me, wants to talk to me and tell me if I want to be still a part of the the group, you know, that he he had to talk with creator and so on and this and that. So. I, at that point in time, I did not give no answer, you know, but what was said to me that, that, um, yeah, that most likely Dinero's going to take charge of the, of the group now, you know, of the whole thing. And that's, uh, in my eyes, he always kind of was in a way, you know what I mean? Like, cause I mean, he put the studio together, you know, he was doing a lot of work behind, I know he hustles as far as promoting and stuff like that and, uh, learning how to do a lot of stuff behind the studio. So, you know what I mean? I, I saw myself as for sure a top, uh, a top, um, top studio guy. You know what I mean? Especially one of the main ones in the group. You know, um, but what do you call it? So he, yeah. So he tells me if I still want to be a uh, part of the group, but if if I am, then for one thing for sure, well, it's not going to be called Double Edge Music no more. It's going to be called Double Filo Records. Double Filo Records, Double Edge, but just in Spanish. Um. So by then I was like, you know, just let me think about it and so on. So as I'm thinking about it, let me tell you this, right? 
Well, let me tell you. Let me show you this. Through DEM music, Double Edge music, from what I know to my knowledge, at least what I was a part of, from what we from the CDs that went out to the stores, in which I physically went myself and bought it because I was I wanted to show love of our on our projects, right? First CD, not saying the first ever from Double Edge Music, but I'm just saying the ones that I knew that that happened under our, our label. I wasn't a part of uh, Mr. Triple on my ways right here. But to show you uh, our work, Triple I, it's a banging CD. If you haven't heard it, heard it, hear it. All right. The Mexicanos album, and forgive me, it's been many years. <laughs> Mexicano CD album, right? Right here. And like I'm saying, number Andamos Locos, which is number seven. That's where we went. Long Beach signed it after we recorded that song. I still have this in, in plastic because I feel I love this CD. It was a banger. It's a lot of memories what I have with this one. I think this one has, yeah, my solo song taken from a G back here. From that video that you guys saw. $17.99 for those that were curious to know how much for CDs back then. LA Affiliates. You know, Thumb Street, Universal, LPG Music Group. We were in quite a few of them. Los Angeles Gangsters, you know. Another dope ass CD. You guys want to check it out, check it out, you know. Because I'm proud of our work. Even though I'm not getting nothing behind it, haven't got anything behind it. You know, it was all love and blessing to be a part of certain projects like that. You know what I mean? And of course, the they brought out the homie um, Dinero's album. I think this was like the last album that was released from that label, but I could be wrong. I was in this homie's um, album as well. You can hear it. Check it out. It's a banger. And as you can see, behind the West Coast, 1107, year 2006. And look at the artist right here that was a part of the of our sort of projects you know so it's, it's a blessing you know so um, at this time I was going crazy man trying to figure out I want to be a part with the homies I want to do music with the homies but not because of everything the, everything that I've been through past I'm experiencing this again it's like do I do I really like want to take time more on projects in a way that that like I kind of felt would take like you know especially the work of my project never got done and never got even made and like started besides that one song I did uh take it from a G so um, around this time like I'm saying I was doing I was building my own studio right I was building my own studio and then f as after a while I started thinking I'm like well I'm gonna, I'm gonna work on so much shit. I don't know what could happen along those lines because you never know, right? Last thing I want to do is maybe bring some attention. Maybe I don't know because I'm just I just want to be recording, bro. You know, like you know how they say, "Live every day is your last day," right? Well, I live it every like I record music like if it's my last time recording, man. That's the way I see it, and that's the way I took it. I want to get everything out and that I can. I want to see myself successful to help out the ones that I love. Not only that, make more people grow around me, you know, help out the community if possible in a lot of different ways, you know. Make my child, my, ch my children blossom, have family businesses, you know, just stuff like that, you know. Helping my people, my, helping my family and the other part of the countries, you know. So, um, my mindset is always still there, and it's always still there in that sense where I feel like, uh, I mean, even though I'm not as pushing it as not more like that, but I'm still doing it. And even and by you guys hearing my music, buying my music, streaming my music, it helps out gratefully. You know, it still puts in, um, money in, in the books for me, and my familia. You know what I mean? And I appreciate. And I thank you a lot for that. So when I got back to the homies on my decision, because trust me, it, it was killing me for a while. Um, I told them like, you know what? I think it'll be best. If I if I go about it on myself, you know, I'll do my own solo thing. But at the same time, it's not like I don't want to do music with you guys. It's the same same uh, uh, way that they felt. Just because they can do their things now doesn't mean that we're not going to fuck with each other, you know. Because we still do music with each other here and there. Um, so that happened. I got my studio together. And let me show you something, right? So if you guys don't have me visit my website, just go to littlesneaksmusic.com. 
for here, right? This will be the website. Right here will be the album store, your next tab over. Feel free to click it. Now, right here you have my albums. You have albums that I have out, okay? You have albums that are free to download. Um, uh, just projects in general, and I'm going to show it to you, right? But what I mean, what, uh, what I want to show you is that, so when I decided to do it myself, that's when I knew, like, okay, if I'm going to see myself in this way, if I, if I could do, if I see myself uh, being a certain way uh, at a certain level, and, and I know the type of work I could bring out, I know the type of ethic I could bring to this, you know, my work ethic the way it is, I'm not going to be nonstop at this, you know, once I get my studio up and going, knowing what the hell I need to do, what I need to do in a sense to properly record, you know, like to make the sound sound right, in my opinion, in my ears, you know, so I started working like a motherfucker, once I started everything, once I knew how everything is played, let's begin this, so in the year 2006, we prepared mixtape, I put out, Life in general, mixtape, two CDs, volume one, 2008. It's either love, lust, or hate, mixtape, 2009. The good and evil within, my actually first official album like, that I declare to be put on platforms, right? 2011. Good and evil ink production instrumentals. Also try to do beats on the side. And if you guys ever mess with one of my beats, much love and respect. I'd love to hear what you did if you're an artist, you're a singer. Let me know. I'll be curious to hear you. Good and Evil in Production Instrumentals Volume 2, 2012. My Legacy, 2CD, 2 2014. Now, I appreciate if you guys hear that My Legacy, because this is not out there like monetized or any type of way, or it's linked up to my YouTube channel. There was a certain situation behind that where I had to like take it off of that, but just remember, I still have that CD out there. My Legacy, 2CD. And that's featuring my daughter, Mijita, which she also has her stolen songs up in there too, as I can recall. DEM Days and Before, 2 CD Mixtape, 2015. Now this right here, Them Days and Before, the reason why I call it Them Days and Before, Them Days, meaning the uh, Double Edge Music Days and Before that. So this is a free download album, and if you download this, let me show you a way to do too if you download it. If you click download, right, it'll take you to a different link. But all that in that folder is everything that I've done when it comes to um, under double edged music. Like whether it's on my songs, a solo song, <clears throat> group songs that we did at, mi at mixtape. If I was involved in that part, like if I was in that song, it's going to be in that album. Whatever I've done, as far as to my knowledge. Even some songs that was never put out there as far as under DM, under my label. This was like DM days and before. Before, meaning before we ever got signed, before we ever <laughs> signed the contract. Like me and the other homie, because I know I had some songs with him on there where I put, uh, where, where we recorded, maybe even like karaoke machine, I think it was. But just to show the old school type of uh style and how it was from that point to the point where it just was like wow it's fucking sounds quality is dope and the music is banging right so he takes you here to the other uh page right so on the left side there's a download so you just click download and it'll start downloading but i'm gonna exit this out because i already have it all right but just to show you about that you could uh, free download right there Tears of a Father, 2006. It's an album. You can either buy it, full stream it for free. All right. Cashing Street Dreams, another instrumental album. My third one, 2017. When You Love Someone, Be Careful. Another CD, 2017. The Reawakening, uh, with me and um, Meeks, 2019. And then right here is when I started doing... Um, just releasing music as, as a passion and stuff like that as time goes on whatever comes to my mind I just release it and so on you know what I mean like I'm saying some people in YouTube do the, have their content right they'll talk about certain topics or they'll do, they'll do movie reviews game reviews whatever the case may be for me it's music I can make music like that brother and whether you like it or not I don't care right the point is if I do something that I like that I know people out there could like 
whether I uh, like the outcome of it, I'm going to put it out there. And it doesn't mean like, oh, I'm going to put it on every place. It's going to be a single every freaking time in a sense where I'm going to make money off of it. Like, nah, I could shoot you one gratis, only, You know, just to throw it out there. You know, oh, it's Christmas. Christmas is coming up. Let me do this sort of Christmas song. I'll put it out there. You know what I mean? That's just my content. My content is also music. But thank you for those of you who love the music and still support it, right? So these sort of albums is me from people uh, getting beats from people off of YouTube. But I also put the description of what producer it is and their link towards that beat where I got that beat from. You know what I mean? And um, to show love to them as well. But to, sh to also show my... My taste in beats, my test, my taste in styles, or what I could f mess with, and what I like to work on. You know, just to give you my sort of different style in a sense when it comes to music, because I di be honest, that's the word I was looking for, being diverse about it. You know, it's not always about this. It's not always about motion. It's not always about being hard. It's not always about partying. It's like so much in different levels that I like to tap into, or even tell some sort of stories. So hopefully you give me your feedback on that if you ever hear my music, right? So volume one, volume two, volume three, there's a volume four, and I'm almost done right now as we speak with the volume five. It's all on my YouTube channel, it's all on my, my website. Feel free to tap in, look it up, show your love and support. It's highly appreciated. You know what I mean? And like I'm saying. All this is just my story. Nobody else is going to know. Nobody else is going to tell it. I want to share it. And this is what it is, right? So that's what happened when I went up based on myself. But what I got out of it and what I feel, because all that from what I showed you, and I'm still doing music, it's not like, because everybody has a way of working, right? Whatever it will be, I guess, you know, especially if you have a job and you got kids. Like, when it comes to me, like, if, once I have the studio, if I record, if I sit down and rewrite something, it got to be, I'm going to record it. Especially if I'm expressing that emotion or whatever it is, that topic, if I'm feeling it, if I know about it, I'm, I'm doing it. I'm not going to wait till next week. I'm not going to wait till that week, like on a Sunday or Saturday, you know what I mean? And drinking beers, getting, getting all the, or getting high and next thing you know, you don't like the outcome of it. Because, you know what I mean? I was doing... I've been through that, you know, I've seen people go through that as well. I'm like, once I get my studio and start recording, I'm going to just be professional about this. Sure, one time I'll have a beer or a, I'll smoke some greens, right? But I, it won't be to the point where I cannot record myself. And that's another thing. A lot of this, a lot of, probably like 90, 95 maybe, through everything that I have, 95%, maybe it could be 98. Now I recorded on myself. Recorded it myself, mixed it myself, mastered it myself. And everything they see on YouTube would be videos, ed editing, all that, graphic, all that. I'd done it myself. Oh, unless I paid somebody to do it on certain sort of songs, some sort of videos and stuff like that. But the music videos, of course, speak for themselves. Somebody else did it. But I'm just saying, as far as the music that was put out there under my good and evil ink, under me, I have recorded myself, edited everything out, done it. And it trips me out because... When I got into the game, when I had my the crew that I had and uh, with the producer we had, all we did, went in there, spit our lines, that's it. The homie, the producer would take care of everything. Mixing, the beat, everything, right? Putting it together, everything. But sometimes it's going to come along those lines where, like I'm saying, I found out for myself. And if I just wait, just wait, uh, who knows how it's going to play out, probably whenever the thing is done. So if I want to get things done, I got to do it myself. And that's what I did, brothers and sisters. Lo hice, man. I puso those fucking huevos and I went for it, man. I, I and, that's, and it paid off. And it still does pay off at times. Am I rich? Am I having a big-ass house and stuff like that? No. But I know I can still grow because I know I haven't been out there promoting and so on. And in and, and a way, I kind of live the way I feel I should or should have at some sort of point in time. Life throws stuff at us. I deal with life issues. You know, music is always, of course, the side, but it's, it is my passion. It won't stop. But I'm not pushing it the way I was there as I was younger. But I'm still always going to do music. That's the bottom line. Um, so it has paid off, at least from what I've seen. And from what other homies uh, had to go through as well, I was one of the fortunate ones that I could say, like, I've seen good blessings out of it. 
I still see good blessings out of it. And the potential is still there for even more to grow, to build, if not for myself, but for the future, being my kids, being my familia. And that's one thing I've always had in mind. And I hope you guys, whatever you do, whatever is your hustle, it's about, yeah, for us too, to enjoy it, to buy the things we want, to maybe, to enjoy life basically, right? Help out the ones we could. But at the end of the day, if something happens to us, is that going to be set and let, set set in stone for our families to keep and for them to help them as when we pass on still, you know? Let them grow their own way, but they'll have the help for what we left behind them. It's because music is endless. Movies, all that sort of thing is endless. It's a side hustle because I could, I'm, tr I, I'm still venue, I still try to venue out to see what other stuff I could do on the side besides music, besides doing stuff, besides this realm of music, you know? But whatever happens, happens. But I'm still here. This is my story when it comes to this uh, music, when I got the contract. Uh, it was bad, I'll say, but at the end of the day, it's like it was a good experience. Sometimes there was even times when he took us out to eat. I'm not saying he never did nothing out of the contract. He took us out to good restaurants. We ate, you know, we needed clothes. He'll buy his clothes. I think sometimes we needed money. He'll give us some men's. But it wasn't like, oh, here's like fucking $10,000 right here. Here's 5000 You know what I mean? It wasn't like that. But it was love at that point in time uh, until the end when it all went down here, well, at least for my eyes, you know? And one thing I want to bring up as well is that when it was all said and done, like I'm saying, the homie took over, Dinero took over, made it as Double Fido Entertainment now, no longer Double Edge. Um, I started Good and Evil Inc. Productions well, what I have right now, and um, so what I try to do as well, once it was all said and done, like we said, we went our ways, right? I try to hit a creator afterwards, and I said this I was like, hey, you know, everybody's doing their thing, but I would like to know if I could still do business with you, meaning if I could buy some beats off of you because we already worked, I already seen how you work on your beats, I already know what you could do, you already know my like, we already have an understanding, and at least I've seen this was going on in my mind around that time and so I didn't hear from him a couple of times went on talked to Dinero Dinero let me know like hey just to let you know creator hit me up and he let me and he told me that he do, he's not gonna want to do business with you when it comes to beats because that feel like that's going towards Dinero's back in a way but then I'm like I get it I mean I can understand it but it's not like I'm being sneaky about it we we talked about of course we're gonna do our own thing we're not gonna like not fuck with each other it's not like we're not cool and at, and at the end i'm being in business with them i in no way shape or form am i telling them hey hey could you give me a good deals or this and that on beast or this or that whatever his deal on beast i would have at that point in time would gladly play for it because i knew he was worth it you know i knew like freaking in the sense of he could make the beast especially the style that i like it to make it he would end up doing it but and to make more things of me, you know, because I try to make beats, like I told you, I have sort of albums. But just because um, I make beats doesn't mean, like, that's a beat, like, I'm going to straight up record on. Even though you kind of should, right, because it's your own beat. But I like other people's styles, and the way I hear other people's beats is the way, if I like it and hear it, I could feel it, I could write to it, I'm going to fucking do it. And I'm going to put it out there and show you that love, show you that love and support. Because your hard work will get recognized, and I'm the one that at least put it out there to let it be recognized that, hey, I love and respect it, this is what I did with it, and hopefully everybody who hears it will rock with it, but guess what? I have more music than what I had done on the side, along with beats. So, I'm here to stay, empty. that's my story when it comes to that. I can't think of anything else that I probably could have left out. Like I'm saying, I'm trying to go on dip on this, but... Two little stories, you know what I mean? Especially the time when I did have a contract, when I did sign it, what happened, what I got out of it. Um, much love to everybody. If you're still rapping, much love. You know what I mean? I'm always here. You know, I'm always down to collab with anybody. Hit, feel free to hit me up, whether on here, on the on the Instagram, or even on my um, contact form on my website, all right? I'm not hard to reach, so get at me. We could do make some bangers, you know, make some hits. Hopefully change some lights out there with some positive shit. Or we could talk about some Grammy shit. Just let me know. And we'll do some business. Alright, Rasa? Alright, to anybody. Alright.
Much love and respect. God bless. Have a good weekend. Go Lakers. I have a Pittsburgh Steeler on. You know what I mean? Because it's kind of raining over here out of nowhere in Southern California. But I love the rain. Love it when it's nice and fresh, you know? I've been holding this on my hand. So... Just to show you guys some love, man. I'm just here telling my stories. And I'm grateful for anybody who's hearing them. You know? I'm grateful for... The support you guys still show love. I'll bring out more stories. If there's anything that you... If you guys been following me for so many years. If you know something about the past that or something you want me to bring up. Let me know. You know what I mean? And I see what I could do with it. And I see if I could um, <coughs> tell those stories. That was a nice, um, nice little talk. Alright y'all, have a good one. Much love. Aratus.